Let me formally welcome you. To, uh, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate that. And we are really lucky to have our, our guest here today, especially at this important time in Israeli Palestinian discussions that's going on these days, So, uh, along with all of the other uh, topics. So it's really a pleasure to have uh, the Deputy Council General, Mr. Raslan Abulukun, with us. He assumed in June of 2009 the post of Deputy Council General with the Consulate General of Israel to the Mid-Atlantic region, which serves Pennsylvania, Ohio, Delaware, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Southern New Jersey. Uh, the Deputy Consul General was born in Osfia, Israel, and he's from Israel's Druze community. In 2003, he graduated from Haifa University with a degree in Middle Eastern Studies and Political Science. Uh, he joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Diplomat Training Program in 2006, and after completing that program, he worked in the Division for International Cooperation in Jerusalem. His first post abroad took him to the Embassy of Israel in Nepal from 2007 to 2009, where he served as the Deputy Chief Mission. He's fluent in Hebrew, Arabic, and English, uh, the easy languages. <laughs> uh, and he is uh, married. They have three children, uh, twins and bottle, and Sharif and Yareen. Thank you. Welcome to Bill Thank you very much. Great job. Uh, just uh, one thing about, one more thing about my CV is that I, I served in the IDF uh, three years uh, on intelligent unit in the Israeli army. Uh, I can't tell you more than that because then I have to kill you <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't want uh, uh, to do that. If, if you give me permission, I'll speak from here because I wrote a few points and uh, uh, truly I, I would like to have it as a discussion. I mean the group here is not so, so big so feel comfortable. Uh, uh, to raise any issue, if you have any questions uh, um, to ask. Uh, I, I would like to have it as, as a discussion uh, more than, than a, a lecture. And uh, uh, I came from Osfia. Osfia is a Druze, uh, a small town of 10,000 people in the, in the north of Israel, 10-15 uh, minutes from Haifa. And of course, a lot of you here didn't really hear about the Druze, the Druze community in Israel. It's an Ar it's a Arab, Arab community, Arab minority. And uh, the Druze uh, in Israel, uh, as a minority, is uh, 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 very uh, supportive of the state of Israel since the independence. And uh, actually, we, we uh, uh, serve in the, in the Israeli army and uh, supportive of, of Israel uh, politically. <coughs> we are talking about very, very small group, 120,000 uh, uh, people. I was born and raised in this, in this place, in the north of Israel, and, uh, and uh, uh, started to work in the foreign ministry uh, in 2006. In Israel, uh, diplomats start their careers in uh, uh, what we call the, the Kos Tsarim in Hebrew. It's the cadet uh, diplomatic course, six months of, of very hard, intensive training. And after these six months, I was sent to, uh, uh, I stayed in the foreign ministry in Jerusalem and worked for six months in the, the Department for uh, International Cooperation. And later I was sent to Kathmandu, like you said, in Nepal, and served there as the deputy uh, head of mission. Now, uh, uh, the funny thing about my, um, my uh, tr uh, move from Kathmandu to Nepal, me and my family, is that the, the foreign ministry gave us three days in Israel. So uh, we were in Kathmandu for two years and we three, day, three days in Israel and then we came to, to Philadelphia. <laughs> so it was like moving from the 17th century to the 21st century in three days. Suddenly you have running water and electricity and it was a big uh, change for us. Uh, we like the place very much and uh, we are enjoying uh, uh, our time here in this, in this great uh, nice place. Uh, I would like to have a discussion with you about uh, uh, the Middle East and, and Israel. And uh, uh, of course, uh, I will talk about uh, uh, what happened uh, the last week in the, in the UN with the Palestinian request for, for statehood. And uh, if we would like to speak about uh, um, the UN and, and uh, what happened uh, in New York, uh, uh, we have to speak about and we have to connect it to the wider context of what is happening in the Middle East in these days. And uh, uh, we are witnessing 
in the last uh, uh, year. We are witnessing very big changes in the Middle East. Uh, uh, one of the Israeli uh, uh, personnel, the, the chief of staff, said a few days ago that what happening in the Middle East uh, uh, now uh, draw new strategic lines in the Middle East. It's, it, it change, the change is so big and uh, uh, as you know, uh, nobody really expected this change to happen right now and nobody knows what will be the result, what will come out of this, uh, of this uh, uh, change. Uh, of course, uh, um, Israel and, and I think most of the Israelis uh, watching these changes uh, in the Middle East, uh, uh, feel sympathy with the people in, uh, all over the region. Uh, the people of Israel support democracies and supported the, the democratic changes happened in Tunisia and Egypt. And uh, of course, we would like to see more democracies in the Middle East and uh, uh, stable, stable uh, uh, democracies, uh, of course. Uh, we think that uh, these changes for the long term will be positive and the uh, uh, final thing, we hope to see a democratic uh, uh, government, but uh, also we are really concerned about uh, uh, the changes in the short term. We are expecting, uh, and nobody knows, one year, two years, three years of uh, instability in the region. Uh, there will be a lot of conflicts inside these countries. Uh, um, uh, between different elements. For example, if, if we take Egypt as an example, so we think that the Muslim Brotherhood will try to gain more power and influence in the, in the future government, and they will have conflict with the liberal uh, forces. And uh, uh, so we will witness some instability in the region until, until uh, uh, we see you know, the final uh, result of it. Uh, of course, for, from the Israeli point of view, there are differences between uh, uh, um, uh, different state. I mean, the, the point of view is, is different f between states that have a direct uh, influence on Israel, uh, mainly states that we have borders with, uh, uh, close geographically to, to Israel. So it's really important for us what will happen in Egypt, what, what will happen in, in Syria what will happen in Jordan and Lebanon. Of course, it's uh, less, less uh, important from our point of view uh, than what happens in Tunisia or Algeria or, or uh, uh, Morocco. Uh, we hope uh, that also in Syria, uh, finally we can see a democratic uh, uh, government with the uh, you know, ending of this, uh, this uh, brutal uh, uh, actions of the, the Assad regime towards, uh, uh, towards uh, his own uh, uh, people. Uh, speaking about Syria, uh, and, and you know, there's difference between what happened to Mubarak and what will happen, what will happen in, in Assad from our point of view, because uh, 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 we want and, and we think that, that Assad already finished his, his term, it's just a matter of time, it would, can take one year, two, three years, uh, two years, or three years, or ten years, and depends to how, how the, the Alawite minority will, will support him or, or will, uh, will uh, end their support uh, uh, in the near, in the near uh, future. Uh, just from our point of view, it's really sad when we see, for example, in Egypt, and all of you may hear what happened with the Israeli embassy in Egypt. The Israeli embassy in Egypt was, was attacked uh, uh, by a mob. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the thing, uh, you know, as a diplomat, as uh, people that uh, have families working uh, and friends working in different uh, consulates and embassies all over the world, uh, it was a very sad thing to, to see. And uh, we might see, you know, these kind of things in the near, in the near future. Uh, of course, uh, we were very thankful and uh, happy that uh, the, finally the, the Egyptian commandos uh, entered the, the embassy and acted uh, uh, and, and rescued these uh, six uh, personnel that were inside, the, inside the, uh, the, the, the last room. Actually, what happened in, in the embassy in Egypt is that when the mob attacked 
the, uh, the embassy, they could enter the embassy and uh, there was one door separating between the mob and the six uh, uh, diplomats inside this room. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we can imagine to ourselves what will happen, what kind of disaster we will witness if, if this mob could, uh, could enter the, the room, the six personnel will be killed. Uh, but also we could see a lot of uh, Egyptian people uh, being killed because uh, these diplomats, they were mainly guards, security guards they were, that were trained and they had weapons in their, uh, 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 w with them and they could use this, uh, uh, these weapons. We, we hope that we won't see any uh, uh, similar things in the, in the future. Of course, we hope to keep the peace agreement between us and Egypt. And uh, we hope uh, to, pe to keep the peace agreement between us and Jordan, and also to reach a peace agreement with the Palestinian and other, other uh, neighboring countries uh, in the future. Uh, looking at looking, uh, the Middle East, uh, Turkey is also a very, very important uh, state in the Middle East, and unfortunately, in the last uh, in the last uh, uh, year or so, we saw some deterioration between Israel and and Turkey. Uh, Israel was, and we hope still, is a very uh, important strategic ally of uh, of Israel. We had a lot of cooperation, uh, economic and military, and uh, tourism cooperation between us and, uh, and Turkey. Uh, we had, uh, unfortunately, we had the, the flotilla incident uh, a year ago. And uh, since then, uh, and even before that, we saw some deterioration in the relations between us and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Turkey. We think that uh, some of this, or most uh, of the, this, the, 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 the reasons of this deterioration has nothing to do uh, uh, with Israel. Uh, we think that Turkey is trying to be, to have a, a better position and more influence in the Islamic world and, uh, and uh, uh, trying to, to uh, unfortunately, and especially the Prime Minister, Mr. Erdogan, trying to get this influence and more, more power in the Middle East by paying, paying by, by uh, uh, Israeli uh, currency. We hope that in the future, uh, uh, the, the relations with Turkey will improve and, uh, and uh, uh, we go back to, to normal relations that we had uh, before. A very important uh, uh, factor and state in the Middle East is uh, Iran. And uh, Iran, and uh, uh, I don't know if you heard the last speech of uh, Ahmadinejad in the UN, a very negative, uh, aggressive uh, speech like always. There was no surprise uh, 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 in his speech. Iran is, is uh, playing a very negative role in the, in the Middle East, trying to get nuclear weapon, and not for, for peace, and not for civil, for, uh, uh, civil uh, targets. Iran is trying to get nuclear weapon, to get more influence and more power in the Middle East, to have more influence in the Gulf. Uh, uh, but uh, the, the president also said that uh, clearly that uh, his uh, own target or will is to destroy the destruction of the state of Israel. And uh, unfortunately, he also gave, g uh, received the opportunity to, to give speeches in Durban, the UN. And uh, uh, we always ask the question how he gets these this opportunities when his, uh, Iran is a member in the UN calling for the destruction of uh, another state uh, in the UN, in the world. Uh, Iran, and, and speaking about uh, a very major and big conflict in the Middle East between liberal forces and the uh, extreme uh, Islamic movements in the Middle East, Iran uh, has been playing for a long time uh, uh, the role of, uh, of uh, the supportive of these extreme groups and if we look at uh, the Middle East today, we see that Iran support groups in Iran, in Iraq, in, uh, in uh, Sudan, in Somalia, uh, supporting Hezbollah in Lebanon, supporting uh, Hamas in, in, uh, in Gaza. And a uh, uh, lot of people that you know, ask us, okay, if Iran gets a nuclear weapon, do you think that they will use it the day after? Now, uh, uh, you know, for us, 
we heard the, the Iranian president, and he said that clearly uh, uh, we want to destroy Israel. But uh, even if, if Iran doesn't use the nuclear weapon, uh, still uh, it can uh, uh, promote its aggressive its, uh, policy that uh, uh, has been promoting uh, uh, in the last, uh, uh, since uh, the 1979 or, or after that, uh, with more, uh, more, uh, in a more aggressive uh, way. Uh, and uh, no one uh, really have the opportunity to deal with this, uh, with this uh, superpower, <coughs> with this rising uh, negative uh, superpower. Now, uh, with all these changes and, and uh, developments in the Middle East, uh, we saw that the Palestinians went to the UN with the unilateral uh, uh, process of requesting a Palestinian state in the, in the UN, we saw that uh, they uh, applied to the Security uh, Council as a full membership uh, a state, and uh, the, the Security Council will be dealing with this request in the next uh, uh, few, few weeks. Uh, the Israeli point of view, the Israeli government said from the beginning that uh, we are against this, this uh, uh, application. We say that we are not against Palestinian state. We want to see Palestinian state. We want to see the establishment of Palestinian state. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and the four Israeli prime ministers before him say that we want to see a two-state solution. Uh, a Palestinian state beside Israel. Uh, a Jewish state or the state of the Jewish people. And, uh, and uh, uh, we say that we are against this application to the UN because we are against unilateral, unilateral uh, uh, solutions. We don't think that there will be any unilateral solution. We have to sit together for discussions, for direct talks, have negotiations, and reach an agreement, uh, a comprehensive agreement between us and the Palestinians. And uh, we have been calling the Palestinians to come to the negotiation table and to discuss with us uh, uh, all issues. And we said that we are ready to put all issues on the table. Unfortunately, the Palestinians uh, hasn't done that uh, yet. They, they, they didn't come to the negotiation table. They uh, uh, prefer to go to the UN and trying to make uh, a pressure on Israel, trying to get some points uh, on, on Israel and the Israeli government. And uh, um, we are saying that this kind of, of work is very dangerous and it can be risky to the peace process. It can be, it's damaging Israel, of course, because we think that they are trying to put pressure on Israel. They are trying to promote the delegitimization process against Israel. But it also uh, 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 can, be, can bring damage to the Palestinians themselves and, uh, and uh, also uh, to the peace process. So, uh, uh, we, what we are saying is that we are not against two-state solution. And you know, a lot of people are in the world saying that Israel doesn't want peace. Okay, let's look at the past and see that Israel uh, had a peace agreement with Egypt. We withdrew it from Sinai, a territory larger than Israel itself, to, uh, uh, and, and made a peace agreement with Egypt. We had a peace agreement with Jordan, we had direct talks, and we, uh, uh, we compromised on some issues, and we reached a deal with the Jordanians. Uh, we had the peace agreement with, uh, with, the, with Arafat, with the Palestinian Authority, and the Oslo Agreement. And, uh, and uh, also, in this time, between the Oslo Agreement and now, uh, uh, Israel uh, uh, offered to the Palestinians a very gener generous offer. Uh, Barak uh, had a very generous offer in, uh, in, 19, uh, in 2000. And here in Washington, Arafat didn't accept it and actually led to the second uh, intifada. And the Prince B Banda from uh, Saudi Arabia himself, that was in these talks, he said that Arafat made a big mistake by not uh, 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 taking this, this uh, offer. The, the, the next time that happened, Olmert, the previous uh, prime minister, 
uh, offered the Abu Mazen a very uh, a generous, uh, 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 let's say, opportunity for a peace agreement. And actually, a few days ago, a week ago, Olmert uh, wrote himself. <coughs> he wrote in the New York Times a piece talking about the details of this, of this, uh, uh, of this offer. He, he wrote that he offered Abu Mazen a two-state solution. He offered Abu Mazen East Jerusalem as the capital of, of, uh, of the future Palestinian state. But he said that we have to reach a deal with the, with the refugees issue because Israel cannot take any refugees inside the state of Israel. Uh, uh, you know, for, for Israelis, uh, every Israeli prime minister to take uh, uh, millions of refugees, Palestinian refugees, into Israel. What Israel today, I'm not talking about the West Bank and Gaza, it means the end of the state of Israel. So uh, uh, to, have the, the, to solve the, the refugee issue outside of Israel, and, and the Abu Mazen until now uh, didn't give uh, uh, Olmert any, any answer. So Israel has proved in the past that we want peace we are ready to make compromises uh, in, a, in a peace agreement. But, uh, but unfortunately, the Palestinians are, are showing that uh, every time that we reach a point that the Israeli government uh, uh, give a plan or represent a peace agreement, uh, uh, they just uh, go away. And uh, uh, so for a lot of Israelis, and, and we have to take into consideration some developments and things that happened in the past uh, that uh, made the Israelis really su uh, suspicious about the will of the Palestinians uh, for an agreement to, ag to, ag to, to, to recognize the state of Israel. You know, Israel withdraw withdrawal from Lebanon in 2000 because we, we had a security zone in Lebanon after the Lebano Lebanon war. We withdrew from Lebanon. According to the UN resolution, we uh, Israeli officers with the UN officers went and, and put the lines, the, the future border between us and Lebanon. We withdrew, withdrew from Lebanon in 2000, and something that led to the second uh, Lebanon war. Because uh, we withdrew from Lebanon in 2000, and from 2000 to the year 2006, we had a lot of uh, attempts from Hezbollah to kidnap uh, uh, and attack Israeli soldiers on Israeli soil. Something that led Israel to, uh, and Lebanon and Hezbollah to have the second uh, war in Lebanon. What we did in Gaza, for example. You know, Israel withdrew from Gaza in 2005. We withdrew from Gaza and we saw this step as, as, as uh, the beginning of a future peace process between us and the Palestinians. But what happened, and people in the international community uh, uh, spoke about uh, Gaza as the future Singapore in the world. But what happened is that has, uh, Hamas took over in, in Gaza and uh, made, made this, uh, this place uh, uh, at, um, a terrorist uh, uh, state. They started the smuggling weapons from Iran into Gaza and shooting missiles on Israel. They shot more than 10,000 missiles in eight years. And then Israel uh, uh, responded. But we made this, this step because we said, okay, we will from Gaza. We will see how, how the Palestinians will look at it. And, uh, and a lot of Israelis today suspicious about uh, 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 compromises because they are saying, look, every time that we make this step of withdrawing, of going back, compromising, they are attacking us. They see it as, as, you know, weakness. And this is why uh, a lot of Israelis today say that we, we cannot withdraw, we cannot go outside of, of the West Bank without security guarantees. Now, I just want to remind you that we are not sitting in the cities of the West Bank. I mean, the, the, the Palestinians run their civil lives uh, uh, totally. We are, the, the Israeli army has nothing to do inside the cities and villages in the West Bank. But we have forces outside of, of cities to prevent people from shooting missiles into Israel and to attacking the Israeli cities and towns. And uh, 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 for us, you know, before making a peace agreement with the Palestinians, we want to be sure 
that uh, uh, we, don't have, we don't see the same scenario, the same thing that we saw in Gaza. That we don't see uh, 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 some uh, terrorists shooting missiles into, into uh, Israel from the West Bank. And because shooting missiles from the West Bank into Gaza, into Israel, it means that we have to close the state. Uh, I don't know how, uh, if you know how large Israel is, but Israel without the West Bank is uh, uh, the size of New Jersey, even smaller. In some points, there are 10 miles, 10 miles between the West Bank and the coast. So uh, uh, um, yeah. what, what, what uh, the Prime Minister also said in the UN is that Israel wants peace, and we are ready to make compromises for peace. We want to sit with the Palestinians, put all issues on the table, and reach a deal. But when the deal is done, it's done. No more claims, no, bo no more conflict, and uh, our security uh, uh, must be guaranteed. Thank you very much. That's it, and uh, I'll, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Yeah. Well, I hope, I hope that the Turks will not do that because uh, uh, it, it is a threat uh, for Israel, for all of the region. Uh, and and uh, we think that the Turks won't reach a point that they do that, that they are going into Gaza with their, with their uh, military ships. Now, about the, the flotilla incident. And Israel said that clearly that we are regret the death of nine Turkish civ uh, civilians. But what happened is that the Turkish government and Erdogan wanted apology, wanted us to apologize for killing these, these uh, civilians. Now, uh, just to remind you that these civilians belong to the IHH, which is a very extreme Islamic group in Turkey. And what happened on the flotilla, and, and uh, you know, uh, the UN had a committee, the Palmer Committee, that said clearly that the blockade of Israel on Gaza is illegal. It's illegal from the, from the military international uh, point of view because the blockade came to prevent Hamas uh, from smuggling weapons into Gaza. This is the, the target, the main target of the, the blockade. Uh, uh, now, I hope that the Turks will not do what they, they said they are going uh, uh, to do. And... Uh, and uh, you know, this, this way we can keep uh, uh, stable, uh, stability in the, in the region. Yeah. Do you think the change in Egypt will create an opening for the Palestinians to be able to leave that part of Gaza to uh, the West to uh, have people go into Egypt? Because it seems that there's been a... No, the, the no, the Egyptians opened the border. Did they open it? Yeah, they opened the border between Gaza and, uh, and, uh, uh, and Egypt. So they're allowing Palestinians to come into Egypt? Yeah, yeah. But uh, there was uh, recently we had a terror, a terror attack in the south of Israel. Uh, terrorists that belonged to Hamas came out of Gaza into Egypt, into Sinai, and then entered to, uh, to Israel and attacked Israeli civilians in the south of Israel. And since then, I think the Egyptian government said that they will, they will close the border and they have more supervision on the, on the border. Uh, but uh, in general, I think the border is open between Egypt and, and, uh, and uh, Gaza. Uh, it is a violation of the Oslo Accord because in the Oslo Accord we said that we have to negotiate and, and keep negotiating to, to reach a peace agreement and he's doing unilateral uh, uh, step. Uh, but anyway, 
uh, I think that you know peace can be uh, reached just in negotiations and talks. Uh, Israeli government, we, we, we are saying that we are ready to sit with Abu Mazen uh, right now. Yeah, and and the, the, the Israeli Prime Minister said that he, he calls Abu Mazen to come and have a meeting in the UN in New York when he, when he spoke immediately. So uh, uh, we don't see any, you know, any uh, to say we are not sitting with Abu Mazen. Yeah, we want to sit with Abu Mazen. One agreement they signed, what are the reasons to believe him is not going to violate new agreements you are going to sign? Look, this is why, this is why we, are, we say that we need to sit and reach an agreement and we need to have our security uh, guarantees. Okay, so security guarantees that also can be, we can, we can have the Americans, the United States involved in this agreement and the international community. The Kvartet, the four, uh, uh, the United States, the European Union, uh, uh, Russia, and, uh, and uh, uh, China, I think. I mean, this, this, uh, they, and actually they did, uh, in the UN, they called for, the, uh, for Israelis and Palestinians to come to the negotiations. And right now we see that the, the Israeli government is willing to come and talk, and Abu Mazen is not ready to do that. And this is, that, that's uh, unfortunate because uh, uh, we cannot reach an agreement be, be, without talking, you know, it's uh, possible. Yeah. Uh, hypothetical political question on both sides. Suppose uh, there would be some negotiations. Right now, Abu Mazen is pretty popular in Palestine, Palestine uh, because of having gone to the UN. Uh, could he pull off something You know, th this, is, this is the main question about leadership and government on both sides, okay? We are saying that we, every uh, uh, peace agreement, uh, will, both sides will have to, have to compromise, the Israelis and the Palestinians, on the different issues. So uh, uh, I think that any, any Palestinian leadership or, or prime minister that want a peace agreement with Israel uh, uh, need to, uh, you know, uh, to, do, to have some compromises with the right of return. Uh, it needs to be solved outside of Israel. You know, uh, all Palestinians and, and Arab leaders that say that all the Palestinian refugees have to come back to Israel, then they are saying to us, look, we want to destroy you, so let's sit and talk about that. You know, uh, uh, we cannot accept it. So, uh, of course, the, the, the Palestinian leadership has to have the, color, uh, the, the courage and the capability of saying to his people, look, uh, uh, we have to reach an agreement, we have to end the conflict. And, you know, uh, uh, the Israeli side, we, had, we also make, we have to make a lot of hard decisions about settlements and uh, about other issues. And the Israeli prime minister also has to, you know, to bring uh, any future agreement to the, to the Israeli people or to the, or the government. And uh, if he, the leaders cannot deliver this kind of agreement, then, uh, then it's, it's not good for both sides. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm just wondering if you could explain a little bit more why a Palestinian plea to be recognized by the United Nations is that risky to the peace process? Because, first of all, we said from the beginning that peace agreement can be reached just by direct talks, okay? So when they're going to the, to the UN, uh, they are bypassing this, uh, this thing. They are just saying, you know, you are uh, uh, the other side, and, uh, uh, but we are going to the UN and we will get our right for state there. It won't change anything on the ground. On the ground, we have the same uh, uh, reality. Now, uh, uh, of course, it will, it will, uh, it will uh, harm the, the, the trust or the increase the mistrust between the Palestinians and the Israelis. 
you know, uh, why, why we ask the question, why Abu Mazen want to go to the, to the UN and get uh, uh, membership? When, when he understood from the beginning that he won't get full membership. Because, you know, uh, in order to get uh, full membership, uh, he needs to, to, uh, to go to the Security Council. And the United States said, said, said from the beginning that they will veto any, any uh, decision in the Security Council. So uh, later he will go to the uh, General Assembly and he will try to get uh, a non-member non uh, uh, state, not, uh, not full uh, members, uh, member state. And uh, uh, then he can go and sue Israel and Israeli personnel in the International uh, uh, Criminal Court. Now this thing will uh, 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 harm Israel, will uh, uh, harm Israeli personnel, and uh, uh, what we are saying is that he's trying, you know, to, to delegitimize and, and uh, harm uh, the Israel. And then the cooperation between us will be harmed. Now, we have to understand that in the last two years, the, there is a, a cooperation, uh, economic, security, uh, full cooperation between Israel and the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. And uh, we have more security in the Palestinian cities. Uh, the economic uh, 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 growth in the West Bank was 10% for two years. And so, uh, uh, and this is mainly because we had a very good cooperation between uh, Israel and the Palestinians. And this is how we see the future in any peace agreement. If you have cooperation, if, if, uh, uh, if you have good diplomatic relations, uh, then you can reach, uh, reach an agreement. But uh, uh, without cooperation, uh, I think that the peace process will be, will be uh, uh, damaged. Yeah. Do you think that in retrospect Israel made a mistake by allowing Hamas taking uh, uh, power in Gaza? We, we Israel could have interfered. No, uh, when Israel withdrew from Gaza, we withdrew uh, uh, totally from Gaza. So they had elections and actually Hamas won in the parliament in Gaza. But uh, still, the, the president was the, the Palestinian Authority president, uh, Abu Mazen. And uh, Hamas did it in a very violent way. Now, Israel going uh, one more time into Gaza, uh, we don't want to do that. We have no attention in doing that and in going into Gaza and interfering. And uh, we didn't know actually what Hamas is. I mean, we knew, we knew what Hamas is uh, uh, all about, what the, how they think and the, uh, their ideology. But uh, uh, we didn't accept, uh, uh, you know, we didn't know that when they take power in Gaza, they will start uh, uh, smuggling weapons into Gaza and actually start shooting these missiles into Israeli uh, cities. And you know, a lot of people that criticize Israel and, and going into castled operation in Gaza uh, have to understand. I, I when I started working in the foreign ministry in 2006, they took us to uh, to Zderot in the south, south of Israel, city in the south of Israel. Uh, and now we have like a million, million of Israelis living this way. You go, you're going into the city and it's a ghost city. People don't walk outside. We, uh, we spoke with some families. You know, when parents send their, their, their kids to the school, they're always thinking about the missiles going down uh, uh, into schools and, and buses and, and and you know, uh, they are living like this for 10 years. And no country in the world will accept this kind of conditions, conditions for their uh, uh, citizens. Israel lived like this, uh, with this, uh, something like eight years. And finally, we had to do something about it. And the, the problem, problem with, with Hamas in Gaza is that the, uh, their groups shooting missiles into Israeli cities from schools, from mosques, uh, uh, and you know, and, and to, into in, in, uh, from inside cities, populated cities. So uh, unfortunately, civilians will be will be killed and injured in this kind of uh, of, uh, of attacks. Yeah. Uh, the Arab Spring, of course, caused by economic problems in the uh, in Egypt and with the other countries. Um, in the West Bank, how has the economy been doing? And Israel. Uh, Also, in terms of, and also, are there young people in the West Bank? 
uh, much like in Egypt, there's a growing um, uh, young population. Uh, is there a growing young population in the West Bank as well? Is that a concern? Or, and also, another question, um, in Israel, are young Israelis optimistic or pessimistic in regards to the peace process? Well, about, about the economic situation in the West Bank, I think that the, the, the economic situation in the West Bank today is much better than it was before. I mean, still, there are some difficulties, but, uh, but uh, the, the economic growth in the West Bank in the last two years was 10%. So it's improving. And uh, we hope that it will be improved also in the future. Uh, um, now, uh, about the young, uh, young generation, I think also in the West Bank you have a lot of uh, young uh, generation. A uh, high percent of people are young in the, in the West Bank. Uh, but, you know, about the Palestinian Authority, uh, uh, we have to say it uh, clearly, they, they are a democratic state. They are not uh, a monarchy or, or uh, you know, uh, a government, uh, one-man one government. They have a government, they have the democracy, and uh, the security uh, improved a lot. Uh, and, and we hope it will continue like this. Now, uh, we said also uh, just uh, one, more, one more thing about the risk for the for the the future uh, peace process with the, with the Palestinian step is that uh, um, you know going to the UN brought a lot of uh, expectations for the Palestinian people, but nothing has changed on the ground, and so the disappointment will be very big, and and uh, this is one one thing that I forgot to say about the damage that can be from the peace process because usually when you have high expectations. And, and uh, very big disappointments, the, the, per, uh, um, the, the percentage of, of uh, violence happening is very, is very uh, high. Uh, what was the, the third question? I was going to ask about um, young Israelis. Are they optimistic for the future? Or are they pessimistic in regards to the peace process? Or, you know, the this, is, this is a very good question. Because, look, when, when we signed the peace, this Oslo agreement with the Palestinians, 70% of Israelis uh, supported the, the Oslo Agreement. And you know, I remember there were, we had a very uh, uh, big uh, of, of euphoria, euphoria, you know, positive uh, uh, atmosphere in Israel and the Palestinians when Rabin and Arafat shaked hands in the White House. And so, uh, but it, it, this reality, this thing exploded in our faces with the Second Intifada when uh, more than 1,000 Israelis were killed in the, second, in the Second Intifada. Since then, unfortunately, we saw some deteriorations. And, you know, we withdrew from Lebanon. We had the, the Second Lebanon War. We withdrew from Gaza. We had uh, missiles coming to us like rain. And, and, but the Israelis want peace. And right now, if you ask, you know, if you have a survey about supporting peace or an agreement, maybe the percent of the Israelis that were supported will be low but when you come to the Israelis with, with the uh, peace agreement ready and saying, look, this is the peace agreement, it's, uh, uh, it guarantees your security, I think that, that a high percent of Israelis will support it because we want peace with the Palestinians. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for the questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.